uh, Chancellor Thompson, uh, President Chakma, members of the Board of Governors, Senate, graduates, members of the faculty, distinguished guests, friends of the university, friends of our family, my wife, Carol, our five children, Roseanne, Shannon, Matthew, January, and Catherine, 10 grandchildren. We've been productive since we left Western. <laughs> you know, the last time I was asked to speak, there was a fellow at the back of the room who said he couldn't hear me, at which point somebody at the front stood up and said, I can, I'll trade places with you. <laughs> so I, I, I hope that my talk will be a little bit more exciting than that gentleman's observation. You know, I was reflecting on this honor and why the graduates are receiving their degrees today. Uh, this is not only a great honor for me, but a great honor for you. A lot of hard work, God-given talents, encouraging parents, friends, family, the background of great teachers, all contributed to why you are here today. My honor belongs to those that have worked with me, my family, the people that work with me in my businesses, in the community, all of those have contributed to why I'm here today. So what do I want to ask of the graduates? I want to ask, what, what's your big idea in life? Does it relate to your faith? Does it relate to your family? Does it relate to your country? Does it relate to your achievements, to your contributions to others, to your relationship with God, or maybe a combination of all of those things? But I challenge you to think about it. What is your big idea? What are your guiding principles, values, honesty, integrity, respect for others? Think of those and keep them in your heart. Use them in your thoughts. Make your decisions, being guided by those principles. Now think about positioning yourself for life, both in your business with regard to your ambitions related to family and others, your profession, etc. Do something that you love. Do something that you have passion for. Surround yourself with people who are better than you are at what they do, stronger people, people that you can look up to, people that you can learn from. That will all contribute to a successful life, not only for you, but those around you. Look for other models, role models. Look for opportunities that you can take advantage of or embark upon uh, to enhance your life and the life of others. I want to tell you the story about Dwayne Andrus, Andreas, who was the president of Archer Daniels. He spoke to an International Entrepreneur Award uh, at the Asper School of Business in Winnipeg a few years back. And he told the story about one day he got a phone call from Hubert Humphrey. Now, a lot of you might, may not remember him, but he was a senator and a presidential candidate. He was also a vice presidential candidate. In any case, he called him and he said, I want you to go to India with me. And uh, uh, Mr. Andrea said, you know, that's a long way. I, I really haven't got time in my agenda to do that. But he got talked into it. So while he was there, he met Mother Teresa. And, and Mr. Andreas with Archer Daniels was in the food business and only she could do this, as she did with Carol and I and others while we were uh, visiting with her, but she, she has a capacity to capture the moment and say something very simply that has great meaning. So she said, you're in the food business. She said, you need to help the poor. The greatest need we have in this world is a low cost protein food. Can you go back and solve that problem? and address that issue. So he did. 
and he put his scientists to work and they came up with some products, low cost protein foods. They became the largest sellers of the company and the most profitable in their history as a result of doing that. So his message was, be there. Be there for your friends. Be there for others. Be there for your family. Be there for your country. And just listen and hear what you have, what you, you know, what comes forth to you and act upon it. On the question of values, some of you may remember Rocket Maurice Richard, one of the greatest hockey players in the National Hockey League. He was um, turned down by the armed services three times because of medical reasons, but yet he became a great hockey player. When he was 21, he married his 17-year-old sweetheart. They had seven children, and he became a great contributor not only to hockey, but to his community and other uh, people around him. On the 125th anniversary of Canada, they wanted to honor him, and he got a, a call from the Prime Minister himself. They wanted to honor him with Her Majesty's Privy Council to become a member of that, and the Queen herself was in Canada to present it. And he, the Prime Minister called him, and he said, you know, I appreciate the honor, uh, but I cannot come. My wife Lucille is frail, and I need to look after her. And the Prime Minister said, we can take care of that. We'll get the best nurses available, and she'll be well taken care of. And he said to her, I don't think you understand. It's not that my wife needs to be taken care of, but that I need to take care of my wife. So here's a man who received many honors throughout, throughout his life, many recognitions, but when it came down to his basic values, he stood by them. You know, last year, Carol and I had an opportunity to visit Cairo just after the revolution. In fact, in some ways, we participated. We were walking uh, one day, um, and we, we had seen a video of a million and a half people crossing a bridge to Tahrir Square. And we saw the police try to stop them with clubs, then with shields, with um, tear gas, with um, some were being shot, snipers were killing some people, uh, fire hoses, everything. They tried everything. Then they tried to run the trucks over them, and people just kept coming. And they ended up on Tahrir Square. It just happened to be that on a Friday after the prayers at the mosques, um, they gather there every Friday. And so we walked by this bridge and we said, that bridge is a bridge of history. And uh, we decided to cross it and join that group uh, on Tahrir Square. And they treated us very well. It was very peaceful. But it caused us to reflect on what a great country we have and the tremendous opportunities that we have uh, here in Canada. Uh, freedom, democracy, the education that you're receiving uh, today, uh, your opportunities in this society. And when so many people around the world do not have that opportunity, the same opportunity that you have. So we, you know, we're privileged. Uh, we need to be grateful and we need to position ourselves for success. We need, there, need to gather great people around us. We need to be patient, and we need to work hard. And the harder we work, as you know, the luckier people get. So I wanted to, I wanted to end by reading something from Mother Teresa but unfortunately it's still in my jacket. <laughs> so I'm going to end by saying this. This ends, this ends uh, and each of you are gonna get a copy of this, by the way. It's, um, it's a saying of hers that was on the wall of one of her children's uh, houses in India. And um, it's called, 
you know, do it anyway. And she outlines all the challenges that you may encounter in your life, including multiple criticisms of others and so on. And she ends by saying, do it anyway. Do it anyway, follow your path. And then she says, at the end of your life, it's not about you and them, it's about you and God. So do it anyway. Thank you.